Today is Thursday, and by the time this video gets released on Monday, I will be on my 14-hour flight to Korea. I'm not looking forward to the 14-hour flight. Uh, I'll be meeting my dad there, I'll be staying with him, and also visiting my grandma and seeing some friends. I have a few friends in Korea, including a friend who I haven't seen since elementary school. She reached out to me. I found me on Facebook. Um, says she's been looking for me all these years. Uh, finally found me on Facebook. So we reconnected like last year. We had phone calls, video calls, um, and just messaging once in a while. Um, and I am going to see her for the first time in over 20 years. It'll be cool seeing her. And she said she'll treat me to, I'll be spending my birthday in Korea. And she said she'll treat me to a birthday dinner. So looking forward to some good sushi. It seems like we'll be going for sushi. How can I afford to go to this trip, you might be asking. If I'm unemployed, where do I get all the money to go to this? I have savings. And also, I'm meeting my dad there, right? Like, it's not all out of my own pocket. Like, I can ask for a bit of spending money while I'm in Korea. So yes, I am very blessed. Um, the flight was expensive, though. That, that took a huge hit to my bank account. Um, that was over two thousand dollars canadian dollars so i think it was like two thousand two hundred canadian dollars or something like that you could say that korea is my home country my motherland i lived there for eight years from when i was four years old to 12 years old and i am ethnically korean 100 percent korean even if i don't really look like it a lot of people think i look chinese but Nationally, I'm Canadian. Ethnically, I'm Korean. So I remember, I'll tell you a story. Spending year 2000 in Korea, we stayed at a hotel for New Year's Eve downtown in Korea before the midnight countdown for New Year's. There were like this event at the hotel. And so there was, we went to this like big open room where there were a bunch of round tables and people were sitting down on the tables. There was a MC who was on the mic and hosting the event and there was a DJ playing music. And I forget what the event even had at the beginning. It was some kind of entertainment, right? But at some point, halfway through the event or near towards the end of the event, the MC says to us, okay, now we're gonna turn this area in, at the front, the stage, we're gonna turn it into like a dance party. They started shining lights on the stage and the DJ started blasting music, but nobody was going up to dance. And <laughs> the MC was like, come on, come on, like people come, come and start dancing. And I remember I was like, damn, I'm gonna do it. So I just ran up to the stage. I was like, I was nine years old then. I ran up to the stage and I started like, dancing my heart out and then I could hear some people were like surprised and kind of giggling and having like found it funny that a little kid was going up and dancing and so I was like dancing and then after not long after maybe maybe a minute or two minutes maybe a few minutes later as I was dancing more people came up to the stage so there were like these two girls who were in their 20s or something and they had super long hair I remember that because they were they came next to me and they were like this and then their hair was flying all over and they were dancing and so we started dancing together and more people came up on stage and we were all dancing and so I remember having a blast and up till that point I've never danced in public like I would always maybe blast the speakers at home and just dance and sing to the Backstreet Boys when I'm completely alone. That was the first time I was dancing in front of other people. And that wouldn't be the end of it. Uh, I, in high school, I did a couple different, two, I had two different dance performances, one at a talent show. <laughs> where it had a massive crowd in front of like half the school or most of the school. And then another event where it was a graduation dance, so just my year. Oh. 
and that was a lot of fun. But I would say that when it comes to dancing, dancing and looking cool, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. But it's so much better when you're just dancing like an idiot, like no one's watching, and you just look silly, and you're just having fun. That's the best part about dancing. Anyway, so I prefer dancing like an idiot way more than dancing and to look cool. It's been five years since I went to Korea in 2019. And even pre-pandemic, this is before 2020, people had masks on. And I was like, why the fuck are they wearing masks? And I asked the cab driver as I was being driven from the airport. And the cab driver said, oh, didn't you hear all the microparticulate pollution from China that's flying over? He said, that's the reason why people are wearing masks so that they protect themselves. And I was like, can't be that bad. Like they're, they're just overreacting. Koreans are just overreacting. So I didn't wear a mask and I walked like 40 minutes from uh, my grandmother's place to the subway station. And when <laughs> at the end of the 30, when it was like 20, 30 minutes in, my throat started hurting. It was like burning. I was like, oh my God, the pollution is so bad that I'm actually physically feeling pain. And so I realized that the Koreans were not overreacting. You really need to wear masks when the pollution is that bad. Um, so <laughs> this is even before COVID. I can't believe people are just wearing masks on the street. Um, but anyways, they're wearing it for good reason. And I started wearing masks since then. And it really did help. My throat didn't hurt when I was walking around. So even a silly little mask can make a huge difference to protecting your body and throat. And lungs. Although I am flying to Korea, I'll be making a few videos before I leave. So while you see this, I'm probably landing in Korea soon, in a few hours. Um, I have some more days in Canada before that I'm gonna stockpile to schedule in the upcoming days. So uh, you'll see a bit more of me ta talking about stories from Korea and then I'll be showing my daily uploads from Korea. So you'll see what I'm doing in Korea. The bad part is that as soon as I land, it's pretty much a long holiday vacation of multiple days for Korea's Chuseok. And Chuseok is like a fall Thanksgiving kind of Korean Thanksgiving, but it's not just one day, it's like th three plus days to maybe a whole week. So a lot of places will be closed, restaurants and stuff I'm sure probably closed too. So um, <laughs> I'll try and meet up friends, I guess, but maybe, maybe some shopping places will be open, I don't know. Um, not that I'm gonna really look to buy much, just to, just to soak in the vibe and just walk around and uh, take in the sights. So, yeah, I guess I am looking forward to my Korea trip. I will be missing Mochi the dog and Tigger the cat and Muffin the cat, the kitten, Muffin the kitten. Uh, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see Muffin when he's all grown up when I come back because I'll be gone for three weeks. So he won't be so tiny anymore. He'll be like almost a full grown cat when I get back, I'm sure. Anyways, so I will see you in tomorrow's video. 1% better every day, baby. Gremlin! <laughs> you don't like? This is the last time he'll be this small before I see him in three weeks or four weeks from now. <laughs> <laughs>